In our previous presentations, we understood how to find the time complexity of algorithms involving loops. Those algorithms are called iterative algorithms. Now we will shift our attention to recursive algorithms. We will understand how to find the time and space complexity of recursive algorithms from now on. This chapter is dedicated to understand space complexity of recursive algorithms. After understanding space complexity, we will then understand how to find the time complexity of recursive algorithms. We learned in case of iterative algorithms, finding the space complexity is not so important because most of the algorithms involving loops have constant space complexity, as long as they do not involve complex data structures. If an iterative algorithm does not have a complex data structure, then the space complexity of an iterative algorithm is almost constant. So, space complexity of iterative algorithms is not a much concern for us. So, this is the reason why we discussed not a lot about space complexity of iterative algorithms. But in case of recursive algorithms, it is not the case. Understanding the space complexity of recursive algorithms is crucial. That's why I have dedicated the special chapter for understanding space complexity of recursive algorithms. So, our focus of this chapter is to understand space complexity of recursive algorithms. And we are starting with understanding the call stack. Because the call stack plays a very important role in finding the space complexity of recursive algorithms. So, let's get started and let's see the topics of this lecture. The topic of this lecture is the call stack. We will understand what is the call stack and how it works behind the scenes. Let's get started. So, what is the call stack? The call stack is a specific memory space or an area of the computer's memory which is used to manage function calls. So, through the call stack, computer manages function calls. Whenever a function is called, something about that function goes inside the stack. What that something is? It is an activation record of that function. When a function is called, the activation record goes inside the stack. So, when we call a function, the activation record of that function goes inside the call stack. That's why the name is call stack. It is used to manage function calls. The stack is a special kind of a data structure. It's a piece of memory which follows a LIFO rule. Last in, first out. So, what goes inside last in the stack will come out first. That's why it is called last in first out data structure. And the call stack is a special memory which is maintained by the computer to manage function calls. When a function is called, the activation record of that function goes inside the call stack. Now, what is the activation record? Activation record contains information about a specific function. It contains a lot of information about the function, but the two most important ones are the return address, where the function should return after its completion, and the variables of that function, which we create when we define the function. These are the two most important pieces of information we should be worried about. So, from now, we think of the activation record as the block of memory, which contains these two information the return address where the function should return after its completion and the variables of the function, which we also call local variables. So, this is the call stack. Now we know what the call stack is. Let's understand through an example how the call stack works. For this, we will take a simple C program and we will understand what happens to the call stack when we execute that program line by line. Let's take a simple program I'm not going to take a recursive program right now. Our focus of this lecture is to understand the call stack properly. For this, I'm going to take a simple program. So now let's discuss the example. Let's first create the main function. We know everything starts from the main function in the C program. In this function, let's declare this variable result. And the type of this variable is integer. After this, let's call the function fun and let's pass 10 and 20 to it. This function will return some value and that value will be received by this variable. And finally, we will return zero from this function. Now, let's create the function fun here. 
The return type of this function is integer. This means this function will return an integer value which will be received by this variable result. Here, this variable a will receive value 10 and variable b will receive value 20. These two are the local variables of this function fun. Now, within this function, let's define this statement return a plus b. This means this function is capable of performing the addition of two numbers which are stored in variables a and b. A is holding value 10, B is holding value 20. A plus B will be 10 plus 20 which is equal to 30. So, 30 will be returned from this function which will be received by this variable result. So, this is the complete C program. And there is one more thing I want to add here. Let's say these are the addresses of these instructions. 101 is the address of this instruction, 102 is the address of this instruction, and 103 is the address of this instruction. These instructions do have addresses because we know the program also have a dedicated memory space. And within that memory space, each instruction of this program will receive some address. So, not only these instructions, but each and every instruction of this program will receive some address. But I'm assuming addresses for these instructions only and the addresses are 101, 102 and 103. You will learn in a moment why I have written these addresses. Let's now create the call stack. This is how you can imagine a call stack. It is like a jar which is one-sided open and this means whatever we want to add in this jar should enter from this side. The other side is closed, only this side is opened. From this side, the data will go inside and from this side only, the data will go outside. And this data structure, this call stack follows the last in first out rule, which means whatever goes last will come out first. Now let's learn how this call stack manages the function calls in this program. There are two functions, main and fun. We know when a C program is executed, operating system calls the main function. So, let's say the main function is called by the operating system and its activation record therefore will go inside the stack. This activation record contains the result variable because result variable is the local variable of this function. Now, within this function, we are calling the fun function. So, main function is the caller of the fun function. Let's call the fun function and let's pass 10 and 20 to these variables a and b. Now we are within the fun function. So the activation record of this fun function goes inside the stack. We know the activation record has to go from this side only and we already have an activation record in this call stack. So the new activation record will sit on the top of this activation record. This is the activation record of the fun function and this is the activation record of the main function. Also remember that the top of the stack indicates the current function call. We are right now in the fun function and this is indicated by this call stack also because the top of the stack is the fun function's activation record. Hence, the fun function is under execution. Now, here we can observe in this activation record, we have variables A and B. These are the local variables of this function. These variables are holding values 10 and 20. Also, we have this weird looking statement, ret 102. Ret stands for return and 102 is the return address of this function. This means after completion of this function, we will return to the specific instruction because the return address is 102. And 102 is the address of this instruction. That's why we will return here. This is the reason why activation record holds the return address. Because after completion of the function, we must return to the caller. But where we should return is also important. That's why the return address goes inside the activation record of the function call. Now let's execute this function. Within this function, we have the statement return A plus B. First, A and B will be added and then the value will be returned from this function. What is A and what is B? A is 10 and B is 20. This information is also within the activation record. And this information will be accessed from this activation record only. 
So we know that A is 10 and B is 20. A plus B will be 10 plus 20 which is equal to 30. So 30 will be returned from this function. Where? To the return address. This means at this instruction. So we are right now in this instruction. And what happens to this activation record? We know we are right now in the main function, but in the call stack, it is right now showing the status that we are in the fun function, which is incorrect. Because the top of the stack is the activation record of the fun. So we need to remove this activation record. And now it is showing the status that we are within the main function. Because the top of the stack is the activation record of the main function. So we are within the main function and it is true. So up to this point we learned that when a function is called, its activation record goes inside the stack. But when a function completes its execution and when it returns back to the caller, its activation record goes outside the stack. It will be removed from the stack. This is the reason why we do not have the activation record of the fun at this moment because we are done with this function and now we are within the main function. Within the main function, we have the variable result and it has received the value 30. So now we can see the result has received its value which is 30. Now after this, this statement will execute. This means 0 will be returned from this function and where it will be returned? We know the operating system has called this function. Therefore, 0 will be returned to the operating system. And because this function has completed its execution, therefore the activation record of the main function will also go outside the call stack. And now we can observe the call stack is empty, which indicates that we are done with this program. So I hope with this it is clear how the call stack works. There are two things you need to remember always. When a function is called, its activation record goes inside the stack and it contains information about the function. The two most important information are the return address where the function should return after its completion and second is the local variables of the function. These are the two most important information that goes within the activation record of the function. After completion of the function, its activation record goes outside the stack. So when a function returns to the caller, its activation record goes outside the stack. So it will be removed from the stack. So this is all you need to remember. So I hope with this the call stack working is clear. And this means we are done with this topic, the call stack. And we are done with this lecture. We learned exactly how the call stack works. And through an example we learned this. But what is the reason why we learned the call stack? The reason is simple. Call stack plays a very important role in understanding the space complexity of recursive algorithms. In order to find the space complexity, call stack plays a very important role. And through an example, we understood how the call stack works. Now we know exactly how the call stack works, so we are ready to understand what happens to the call stack when we call a recursive function. In case of recursive function, the picture is little different. And we will understand this in the next lecture. Okay friends, we are done with this lecture. I will see you in the next one.